What's up, guys? This is Coach Grant with First Sound Training, and today we're going to be breaking down how to use the throw-by technique. So today we're mainly going to be talking about how when you get an inside release on like an outside breaking route or an outside release on an inside breaking route or how you can use a DB's momentum against them to create some separation. Okay, so this is a great technique that you guys can use at the top of the route because, as you know, if you've been watching these videos, that you guys should trust your moves at the top of the route. You don't want to force anything. You don't want to have to, if you got an outside breaking route, you don't want to, oh, okay, i got to force an outside release. If this DB takes it away, fine. Let's take what he gives me, trust my moves at the top of the route, and then let's execute. So that's mainly what we're going to be focusing on today. Not a whole lot of footwork, just working on this technique at the top of the route. And um, also, guys, if you're a receiver and you want to get better hands, check out that link in the description. It says approve your hands in 30 days. I know I've been talking about that a lot, but I really believe in this program. 30-day program to just help you guys improve your hands. Let's get started. So first things first here, we're going to be talking about how when we force this in, or when we, I shouldn't say force it, but when we take this inside release on an outside breaking route, how your hands got to be violent, right? So that's going to be the main focus. So let's watch his think full speed one more time. So he's coming off here, takes the inside release on an out run. You see how aggressive he is when he throws him by, right? As long as we're not extending and not pushing off, we shouldn't be getting a we shouldn't be getting a flag called, right? So we should just be as violent as I can with my hands, try to keep your hands like I would say inside your frame. You don't want to reach too much with your arm, but there's some cases where you might have to, right? Now when we decide to go with this move and go with this throw by you see again like i said how violent he is and the thing about that throw by is that you're working to get hands yeah the, all the way throughout the route you're always fighting those hands you're always pretending like he's got crap underneath his fingernails and you got to swat his hands off and when you get to that break point you got to really be violent with that drop and throw him by because that's how you're going to create separation and if you're aggressive with those hands if you're really aggressive with that throw that's what's going to be able to get you some separation underneath here right so you see just how violent he is and where is he attacking you're going to hear me talk Talk about this a lot today that point of control so in my eyes i see three points of control when we're working a situation like this i see back of the elbow back of the shoulder and then the back of their hip right i see three points where we could throw this guy by so back of the shoulder we throw the back of the hip i would say is probably not as common you i don't really see that all that much but that's another point of control where you could control a guy's momentum and then if he's got an extended arm you swap that elbow to get those separation to get those hands off and we rip back underneath now the important part is when you guys are physical here and you're able to rip back underneath, you guys want to make sure that you're driving. You want to make sure that you're running your arms and accelerating off this break to widen the distance with this guy. You hear me talk about that a lot. But when we work that throw by and we attack that point of control, I got to make sure that I'm running out of the break. Got to make sure I'm exploding, getting some acceleration out of there and making this play on the ball. There's a great route right here. Let's watch this thing full speed one more time. So he's coming off. Again, pushing vertical, swatting by, make sure we're violent with those hands, aggressive with those hands, and then accelerate out. So now we're going to be talking about this comeback here. So this is like... A situation where we really don't have to get too much leverage here, but we don't want to just stop and drop this thing off if he's got hands on me, right? So let's watch at full speed. We're going to be looking at rugs here, and a great way to work this throw by is with this peak back as well. And you want to put that hand up at like the last second. That's something that we didn't really do in the last clip because he put that thing up a little early, and in my eyes, that telegraphs this move to the DB. If I'm a DB and I feel a receiver's hand on me for like three, four, five steps, he's not running full speed because he's got his hand on me, and he's not driving those arms. Hand fighting is a different scenario. I'm talking about running with your hand on his shoulder, prepared preparing for this throw by. If I'm a DB, I'm just going to decelerate if I can feel that, right? You want to try to do it at the last possible second. Now, I got an outside release here on a comeback route, and if I'm working release, right, I'm running here, pushing vertical, pushing vertical. I'm not just going to drop this thing off right now and try to shoot out of there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get some separation with my hands. This is the same idea as maybe like you're running a speed cut out, and you give him a little lean with that shoulder, and you pop it off, right? Now, this is I take this outside release again, outside release on a comeback. I'm peeking back. I'm trying to sell this thing vertical with my eyes, looking back trying to get this guy to really overcommit his hips, then I use his momentum to throw him by to create some separation, right? That's the key when we're working an outside release, like a comeback or an out route or, um, yeah, et cetera, like that, out route, comeback, whatever it is, and this guy's running, I'm able to take the outside release, you still want to be able to get his hands off you because if you get these hands off of you, that's going to allow you to accelerate and widen the gap a lot easier with this DB than you might would if you're allowing him to get hands and you drop this thing off and he's still able to get hands and get physical because you got to realize DBs, the way they get hands, Hands, them getting hands is their recovery, right? That's how they make plays. That's how they try. That's how they stay right with you, and they're able to make a drive on this break, right? That's what they're taught to do. I remember did a coaching clinic, and they said 70% of the time when DBs would get hands on the receivers, they lose. Seven out of ten reps, if they get hands, they would. I mean, they would win. 
They'd win seven out of ten times. The receivers would lose. So three times only when the DB got hands, the receiver would win. Now, I think that those numbers can flip if you're doing this thing more physical with your arms, right? You're being physical at the top. You're being physical throughout the right. You're pretending like they got crap underneath their fingernails. Get those hands off you. Work to get those hands off you, and that's what will be able to get you some separation, especially on a route like this where his momentum's going upfield. I drop at the last second, and I throw at the last second. I don't want to put my hands there too early like I was talking about before. Let's watch this thing full speed one more time. This is a great route here by Vertical. Good job selling with eyes. Good job initiating the contact, throwing him by, trying to put that hand up at the last possible second. Now let's talk about this stop route now. Okay, So now this stop route is important because selling vertical is important here. But this is like one of those situations where maybe we don't throw by right as I drop. I drop and then his recovery arm, which would be his left arm if we're taking an outside release here, his recovery arm is what I use to kind of control his momentum by, right? And this has just got to be a habit. You can't really think about something like this when you're in the middle of a play. So let's watch it full speed, then you'll know what I'm talking about. So you see how he's able to take his outside release, sells vertical, drops it off right now, and kind of uses that just a little bit of a swat. That's all instinctual, right? It's got to be instincts when you're working this swat, this situation of a swat, right? Because he's running he's got space he's got him beat by a step so why why not continue to push vertical and just drop right now right so that's exactly what he does and he drops on this stop route and you see this db still shooting by but you see we still have that instinct to just use his momentum right here and swat where that back of the shoulder i drop my hips right now and i know that's how he's going to be recovering how else would a db recover in this situation he's running stride for stride with you downfield and you drop right now how else is he going to recover he's going to try to recover by putting hands on you by trying to get physical to kind of get so he can decelerate and almost hold on to you right but if I have that instinct to where I snap this thing off, I drop on whatever inside step that is, and I throw this shoulder by, that's what controls his momentum, and that's what gets his momentum here, right? Now, let's talk about this here. Let's talk about if I got to maybe run, what is this set up, right? Because we all know, yeah, we throw him by, we attack that shoulder, ball should be out, I widen this gap, I get some separation, I come back to it. But what is this set up exactly? So let's say maybe one time I got to go here, and I want to run like a little stutter go. I give him this little stutter go, and I put my hand on that back shoulder and I do that fake throw by and I give him a couple steps back towards the inside right here. Like I snap on this inside leg, I go outside leg, throw back to the inside and I fake this throw by with my arm and then I'm able to get him hesitating and jumping on the inside. You could work that same thing. Like let's talk about this second, let's talk about this first clip right here. This is how this builds off of it. Let's say he's here and he swats him by, right? We run, we, let's say we got to run a dig and we want to take this inside release. Let's say he swats him by here and then gives him three steps to this blind spot. So he swats him by, then he goes left, right, left, and he throws that fake throw by to get that DB to open up, get him to stutter, or get him to turn his hips out of there. That can get you a lot of space after you've built off of this throw by, right? They call it a throw by, then a fake throw by. So let's watch that last clip one more time. And same thing is initially right here. Like, let's say we got to go here, and let's say we got to run an out route. And let's say his split was cut down. Let's say he's a slot, and we're running stride for stride. I swat him by just like I do, instinct, bam, and then I take three steps to this blind spot. I go right, left, right to that blind spot which forces him to speed turn and then I'm able to run an out route. That's if your split was cut down. Okay, so you guys got to know how this throw by works and then how this throw by can build into a fake throw by move, right? Or how you can always be a vertical threat with that throw by. Okay, that's something that aids to you being able to drop on a dime and use a DB's momentum against him. Let's watch it again full speed one more time. So he's coming off here, pushing vertical, drops right now. Make sure we swat him by, accelerate off this break. That's a great route. All right, guys, I really want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Again, if you guys have any questions or comments, Anything, just leave those in the comments. I'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Um, I always appreciate those. And again, if you guys want to improve your hands program, I definitely believe in to help your grip strength, um, hand-eye coordination, just overall repetition drills, no quarterback required. Check out that link in the description. It says improve your hands in 30 days. I'll see you guys next time.